the Prodigy Duck Hunt Dog Master. Zero, I was just speaking to him on the side a little bit, and he said he by no means regards this as a free match. He respects MVD very much, takes the match very seriously. He thinks it's going to be quite difficult. He said in this matchup we should be looking out for MVD's projectile camp game. It's going to be really strong. Of course, MVD being heralded as probably the best Duck Hunt Dog player. That's awesome because that is a character that is still not very common yet. So hopefully we can see some high-level tech from him. Yeah, absolutely. He thought that uh, the bananas from Diddy Kong aren't going to be as effective in this matchup as much as they might be in some other matchups because you can't throw them out willy-nilly. You have to actually make reads in this matchup. He's not going to be able to just flow chart this one through. So let's see how he's able to adapt to the standard brick walling strategies of Duck on Dog. The match getting right underway on Final Destination. <clears throat> oh, no. Apparently not right oh, underway. That's armors. a button check. Armors, yep. Yeah, that's a button check. Okay. Nothing too complex for Smash 4 button checks, just making sure everything works the way it's supposed to work. Not too many ridiculously over-the-top technical inputs. But it looks like we're ready to go. Oh, come. Interested to see where the stage is going to run out to. Survival. Actually, it is going to be Final Destination. Fantastic. Three. So we're getting right into it. Zero being Diddy Kong, MVD on Duck Hunt Dog, MVD from Florida, I failed to mention. <laughs> we get a standard combo. Zero instantly is able to break the guard. He's able to cross up that can. Now, the can is one of the major key factors in the Duck Hunt Dog matchup because Duck Hunt Dog is able to control that can remotely to move forward towards his opponent, <laughs> and it controls a lot of space in a very safe way. He also uses the clay shooting projectile to rack up damage and set up combos as you see here and of course then he does have the shooter uh, to set up a delayed projectile trap similar to slow fireballs in Street Fighter for anybody familiar with that and on the other hand you have pretty much Diddy Kong who's going to utilize his speed to get in and then use his combo game to rack up lots of damage so Duck on Dog trying to keep him out Diddy Kong trying to get in we can see the clay shooter very very effective projectile because it's tricky even when you block it to get past the projectile uh, since it explodes afterwards. But right now, Zero doing an excellent job at staying inside on MVD. MVD trying to cross up, get to the other side of the can because he knows that active hitbox will protect him against Zero and provide him just an additional way to have some coverage. Zero not afraid at all, not afraid of the can, not afraid of any of the projectiles. Goes in, gets that grab, and he's keeping MVD on the edge so that he can set up traps and that MVD is not able to put in his projectiles. Pulls out the first stock really cleanly, gets a solid forward smash out of Banana. Nice hit confirmed there. MVD answering back now with a couple of back airs. That's one thing I like about Duck Hunt Dog. Even though he's a projectile based character, he has a really strong set of normals and basic moveset. So he's able to do some fighting up at close range. He has great uh, range and priority on a lot of his normals, on his aerials. So he's not just a sitting duck when you get inside. But the unfortunate part is... Oh, very nice. Charge forward smash. One thing a lot of people don't realize is that Duck Hunt Dog's forward smash grows in range as you charge it, not only in power. So it catches a lot of people off guard if they're just used to forward smash, but they haven't seen a charge before. It actually has more range and can definitely, you know, end out of stock as we saw here because it is very powerful. Duck Hunt Dog is not actually a stranger to killing, unlike many projectile-based characters often are. Right now, Zero, as you see, trying to get in. A poor choice for Clay Shooter right there. That gives Zero the opportunity to get a grab, and he takes it. He's running with it. 87%. You can see he's relentless. He's not letting uh, MVD land at all. And that's really one of the biggest strengths of Zero is that he maximizes on all of his advantages in addition to having such a strong neutral game. Second forward smash. Close it out there. 10% on that Diddy Kong. Very, very dominant performance by Zero. Very interested to see where MVD will go for this counter pick stage. We do see that FD wasn't exactly what he was looking for. Uh, I definitely do think that something with platforms is very, very useful against Diddy Kong. Not because of the bananas as we would have seen in Brawl, but actually because um, against Zero in particular, he's really, really good at pressing that advantage, and I think you want landing mix-ups here. I don't think you just want FD to have the whole stage where Zero runs across and he's able to always get his optimal traps on you. We can see now MVD sets up, and now one thing about the can is when you press the uh, the button again to reactivate the can to make it jump, because what you do is you keep pressing neutral B and it keeps making the can incrementally move forward. However, it will continue moving the direction from wherever you tossed it from. However, if you hit the can um, as Duck Hunt Dog in the other direction with a meaty hit, then it will start to move in that direction instead. So you'll notice that MVD will be setting out 
uh, the can, and then when he crosses it up, he'll hit it back in the other direction so that it's always in front of him, in between him and his opponent is ideal, because the can can backfire and hit Duck Hunt Dog. Right now, Zero doing an extremely good job at simply playing a safe game. The problem right now that MVD is having is not only is D uh, Zero doing a really good job at using Diddy Kong's speed to get in on side of him with those big meaty hitboxes, but he's also not leaving any openings on himself. I mean, he, he's not really giving MVD a chance to put any aggression onto him. Normally, out of the projectiles, you don't just want to sit back and throw projectiles all day. That's not entirely the whole game of Duck Hunt Dog. You want to utilize those projectiles to get into traps, follow-ups, and setups because Duck Hunt Dog does have cute combos of his own. However, when you're playing against a player as precise and aggressive as Zero, it's often very, very difficult to get inside on him. Even with the projectile traps, he's very savvy. He's going to know how to negotiate those projectile traps, which are often considered to be very linear, although they do have many dynamic mix-ups if you just know how they work and how to act. And, of course, if you're also able to apply a lot of pressure onto Duck Hunt Dog so he's not able to set up the traps he wants, he's going to have a much, much more difficult time finding the openings he's looking for. You see there, you know, he's going for the traps, he's forcing Zero in, he's forcing him to shield, so then he tries to go for the dash grab, but Zero's aware of these situations. He's always rolling out of these precarious situations, and MVD is finding a really hard time landing any meaningful hits onto him. You do see a nice pivot grab there into the back throw, but great recovery there. The bold monkey flip kick, because of course if you don't grab the edge there, you're not able to use up B to recover. And a nice closeout with the can right there. MVD actually taking a stock out in a reasonable time frame here, but he is at 111, he needs to find his way out. This could be it here. Stage transformation, air dodges into the down throw up air, and that will be the set. Zero takes it solidly over MVD, two to zero. Really, really impressive performance right there. All right, Pierce. So um, I'm going to show you a little view of the bracket for your own sake and for the folks at home. So excellent, excellent. Let's let's see who we have coming up. I mean, we this is a stacked tournament. So many upsets yesterday. We're very sorry it wasn't streamed. There was a lot of things going on at Apex. And actually, uh, actually, unfortunately, we were supposed to stream top 32 today. Yes, That's right. why we're starting so early. But um, the bracket organize the, the guys that are running brackets in their zealousness to get the, the tournament run on time. Please forgive them because yeah, we exactly. were behind schedule. We did we did lose they, that day. They so ran some of the top. We lost 30. a lot of stuff, but unfortunately. Um, you know, we lost a lot of matches, a lot of hype things, and there were a lot of upsets, but we do still have, of course, a stacked finals bracket coming up for you guys right now. We can see that Zero just took it over MVD. We have Mewtwo King versus In the Cat, going to come on soon. Mr. R versus Nairo. Uh, Neotono versus Arrow Link. Okay, and on loser's bracket, in just a second, we see MVD is already in this section of the bracket. Yeah, so top eight is coming in hot. Yep. And loser's side, we have Abadango versus Ninja Link. Uh, Ninja Link, who won the first Smash Attack with Mega Man, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have uh, False versus The Buzz. We did just see a little bit of uh, The Buzz playing in doubles just now. Lost to uh, Choco and Nitono. But he's going to be extremely strong in singles. Anti, who is uh, one of my sources of information in terms of who's strong in this game. Uh, says that he feels the buzz is the strongest player on the East Coast, which right now a lot wow. of people feel is the is the strongest those, region those in the world. Those are big words. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. So we have also J Tails. Who people have been asking me all day long, where is J Tails in the bracket? Well, he's in top 16. He's there in you the go. Side, but you know he's he's still in it, and he's up against Six WX, who's a player that I'm not too familiar with. Yeah, Six WX. As I said, East Coast, Beast Coast, um, a recently emerged player. He was. Uh, he wasn't around in the brawl scene too much, or if he was, he didn't have any reputable wins. But as Smash 4 has come out, he's brought Sonic to another level. Definitely one of the top Sonics, if not the best right now. Awesome. Made his way here. I believe he beat Choco, uh, really? if I remember correctly. Okay. So uh, I'll have to double check that information because I got a lot of this information secondhand from the players. Nairo was doing a great job updating me last night. Um, but yeah, he, he plowed through some fierce foreign competition and some out-of-state competition to hold it down for... The, for the East Coast, and he's going to find his way facing off against J-Tails coming up next. And then last, we have Ally versus Amsa, and the winner of that will go on to fight MVD's Duck Hunt Dog, as we just saw. So yep. Actually, uh, that match is the mo the match I'm most excited for in Losers, because um, both these players I'm quite familiar with. You know, yeah. they're players that have been playing for years and years and years. So I'm interested to see the technology that they've come up with in this game versus how they play uh, in Melee or Brawl or the older games that they play. Yeah, I've actually heard that Amsa is playing Greninja in this game, wow. which I'm really, really excited <laughs> to see, because, you know, after the patch, the Greninja 
like Wave just died. Everybody was like, oh, Greninja for top tier, and then and they then patched wah, wah. him. And, you know, Ninja for low tier. Exactly. And a lot of players, <laughs> um, a lot of the top players have, that I've been talking to, Anti, Nairo, um, Nakai, we all agree that Greninja is actually not that bad. The problem, the reason you don't see him anymore, not necessarily the problem, but the reason you don't see him much anymore is just because everybody is... Um, simply hopping on the bandwagon, simply playing the character that they feel will give them the best chance to win. And right now, that's di that's the Diddies, that's the Sheik, that's why you see them so popular. We did see um, a lot of anti-meta Luigi come out. As I predicted earlier, Luigi not doing too hot in this tournament. You know, most of the Luigi players have indeed fallen. He just has too many shaky matchups. And at a big event like this, um, your anti-meta has to be able to get through the crowd to get to those familiar matchups, and then you have to be really good at the familiar matchups. You have to really be ready to take out the top Luigi's and the top Sheik's. And at the end of the day, I feel like the strongest regions weren't the ones that, like, their t the top players weren't oversaturating themselves with Luigi. They were doing it more with the Diddy's and, uh, to some degree, the Sheik's. So, I definitely feel like when you consider it from that aspect, uh, not too surprised to see Luigi fall, but I do still expect to see him rise up in some tournaments for some time, even though he didn't do too hot at Apex. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how Diddy Kong, I mean, excuse me, how Luigi rises back into the game if he's able to make a comeback or if he'll get replaced with some other top tier or some other anti meta because we can see the metagame is extremely dynamic. I mean, we have a different flavor of the month pretty much every second or third week. At the beginning of the game, everybody's crying, Lucario's broken. I don't see any Lucario's up here. Everybody's saying, Yoshi's broken. I don't see any Yoshi's up here. Then everybody was saying, Sheik's broken. Well, I see a few Sheik's. A lot of them have fallen. Now everybody's saying, Diddy's broken. And now, so all the top players are playing Diddy. So that's why Diddy's in the top. I don't necessarily know if Diddy is an actually broken character. A lot of times, characters simply aren't getting explored fully. I, I feel like I've seen, in competitive play, 10 characters in this game. Yeah. And... To, uh, just to interject a bit on that one, as someone coming in from the outside, I kind of experienced a little bit of this with Brawl, yeah. where there was all the issues with uh, Meta Knight, who obviously is a very powerful character. Um, and actually, there was a period of time where Meta Knight was completely banned, and there were even rules where people that were tr trying to create that said, hey, if you counterpick this stage, you cannot select Meta Knight yeah, and things that, like that. Yeah, that's how Brawl is being run today. Is uh, it? Okay. Um, but it turned out that at one point previously when that was done, instead, the next character, which I believe was Diddy, ended up becoming too powerful. No, Ice Climbers. I Ice, climb was. Ice Climbers go. were the huge problem. It was ridiculous. And um, the thing you also have to remember is, like, know your history. Know your Smash history, because let me put you on for a second. In the beginning of Melee, you know who everybody said was broken? Link. <laughs> Low tier Link. Right? No, Everybody was like, oh my god, down throw up B, that's that's the wave right now. And everybody was on that down throw up B chain with Link. You know? And then, of course, as the metagame developed a little bit more, we were like, okay, we actually figured out how to play this game. All right, Sheik is the wave. You know, nobody knew what a fox was. Sheik was, was the wave. And, you know, it took years for Melee to develop to a point where, you know, fox was whipping out, where it was big, big news for fox. So... Okay, so coming up next, uh, Melee, man. By the way, that Salty Sweet last night, yeah. did you watch any of that? Viewers? I watched all of the oh, Salty Sweet live. That was exceptional. Salty Sweet was amazing. I cannot believe that Leffen put his hands on Chilling Dude while yeah, they he, were playing. He pat him on the back. He, he when told he him, it's okay. It's as he was destroying him. Yo, that's <laughs> crazy. I never, I mean, I've seen some disrespectful stuff. That, that's I've never out seen. of control. Did you see what he posted on Twitter? After yeah, oh, after he, he was, was like, get he, that diss track and take it with you on yeah, the way out or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's, that's crazy. Yeah. Leffen is, is like the villain we all needed. All right, so coming up next, we have Neotono versus Aerolink. Neotono is uh, one of the Japanese players in yeah. attendance. Now you'll have to forgive me because I forget the region that Aerolink hails from. And I'm not sure who he plays in this game. Oh, it, it, it seems to be Texas based on his tag. So okay. there we go. Um, and I'm surprised. I mean, there's actually so many powerful players in Texas that are not here today. Uh, I know that GNS has been touching the game. I, I heard that from Dojo, who also said he's considering uh, playing the game. So <clears throat> we don't have those two here. Razor's not here. A, a lot of the old school, like Texas Strong Guard, not here today, which is so, so sad for me. I love Texas. If you guys are from Texas and watching the stream right now, big shout outs to all you guys. Love you. Uh, and I wish you guys would come out of Apex, but hopefully I'll see you guys at something soon. There's always other events. Yep. Uh, I mean, Evo. Evo is the, the big, big one. Shoe. Yeah, Evo is the big show, one. Definitely. So maybe we'll see Texas over there. But for now, we do have Aerolink over here and uh, Neotono. Hailing from Japan, big shout out to him. Good job on that doubles victory. I'm sure he's trying to win or uh, hold down his sponsor right now because the organization who's hosting, I mean, uh, the winner of doubles in Smash 4 uh -huh. wins uh, a trip to Japan 
to compete in their doubles tournament. Oh. Uh, I forget the name of the organization. I greatly apologize. I, and just in time, I have Falls hopping in on the mic joining yeah. me. So Falls will be joining us, everyone. I'll be in the chat to answer some questions for you guys. Uh, have fun. Enjoy the rest of Top 16. Top 8, again, will be on VGBC later today. Excellent. So uh, welcome. How are you doing, Corey? I'm doing well. Doing well. Thanks for asking. Good. We were just talking about how the winner of doubles uh, is getting flown out to Japan, and Niatono still holding it down. He's sponsored by that organization, so they're definitely probably relying him, relying on him to, you know, hold them one trip. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right now, however, he is performing in the singles bracket quite well. Although it's losers, he's been performing extremely well with this Sheik. And Sheik versus Diddy, a matchup we should expect to see a lot today. But you know what? I'm not even mad because. First of all, it's two different characters, unlike, you know, where we have previous games where it's an oversaturation of one character, which I like a lot. And the second part, I really like it because Sheik and Diddy are both skill-oriented, extremely fast characters, fun to watch, full of hefty combos, have an excellent dynamic neutral game uh, into uh, awesome follow-up situations that both players, um, both characters have options for. So watching Aerolink versus Neotona right now, you can just really see uh, right a on. lot of differences right oh now. Oh my goodness, Neotona reading that second jump, really locked down all of the... Uh, Aerolink's options right there. Yeah, it was really, really great read there by Nitono. And you can see why a lot of the top players are saying they actually favor Sheik in the matchup versus Diddy at the highest level of play because the way Sheik is able to just play aggressive onto Diddy is really good as long as you don't run into that fair just like that. And uh, and you can also uh, p punish that fair on block. Sheik has the ability to punish so many things with the speed of the dash attack. Or just her dash is so fast in general. Yeah, she can net a lot of reward off that uh, banana. As soon as she gets it, even if she's far away, she can bounce in the fish for a punish. Yes, also, one of the things that Sheik's traditionally struggle with as a character is KOing their opponent. However, against Diddy, you have such awesome edge guard opportunities because his edge guard, I mean, excuse me, his recovery has uh, so many flaws in it. Even though it has a lot of different options, you know, you're locked into certain options in certain situations, and they are exploitable. So once you level up enough that you can simply be comfortable with your character off stage. You really can get some solid edge guards in. We're looking for some right here. Neotono drops kick. that one. Yeah, it has a, a lot of priority on that kick. It's extremely disjointed, rather, I should say. Yeah, Neotono on a really healthy lead. I wouldn't be surprised if he just stuck the needle camping. That is obviously what's safest here. Yeah, and you can see he's definitely taking his time, charging a needle, rolling away, charging a needle, canceling a block, holding, holding the banana. That banana. Yeah. Excellent. Base the second jump, however, the up air is buffered out of it, out of the air dodge. Yeah, definitely with an opportunity. I think he was maybe looking for an up smash or a back air. Ooh. I like right there, the Aerolink has a good presence of mind to know, okay, if I air dodge here, I'm pretty much dead. So he just jumped away. Utilize side B, give him that burst of horizontal momentum in the air. A really strong tool of Diddy Kong, oh. but a down throw up air, yeah. catching him with the hoo-ha on his own character. Neotono with the two stock. Solid yeah. performance. And in that instance, uh, he would have had to air dodge to escape the yeah. up air follow up. So it's all about those 50 50 the sheet getting thrown. It's really hard to stay, um, to keep your uh, composure. Yeah, say. for sure. It's, it's really difficult. You know, you realize if you air dodge, you die. If you don't air dodge, you die. It's all about guessing correctly and reading your opponent. So great job to Neo Tono there. We'll have to see how Arrowling's going to adapt. Definitely, Smashville was not working out for him. Uh, he's looking at maybe banning Halbert or choosing Halbert. I think Halbert's being banned right now. So now we're hovering over Town and City. I think that's where we're going to end up. Town and City definitely wouldn't be too bad. FD like uh, stage with transformations on the side of the platforms giving you room to breathe. Plus we got the lowered blast zones. All right, Flat Zone X is banned. <laughs> Castle Siege is not, however. So that is a strong possibility. But I don't know that I would favor Diddy over Sheik in Castle Siege. No, not with the transformations and Diddy's recovery. Uh, can be kind of weak in certain instances. Not only that, but he actually loses a lot of potential. For, he, he, or rather, he opens up a lot of potential to let Sheik get some strings on him because Sheik it, has the much better horizontal strings, and Castle Siege is a much better horizontal stage. If you have horizontal combos, then you're going to be doing really well, and Sheik has that ground speed chaining into those fares. Diddy's fares are really, really meaty and really good, but they're not, they don't chain into each other. It's the same way Sheik does. As we're seeing right here, th there's it, there it is, fair, fair, uh, grab, fair, bouncing fish. So we see these horizontal strings coming out, and it ends because the stage runs out of space. That's something huh. that's scary on Castle Siege, where that doesn't necessarily happen. So you, you could just get hit with 50-50s all the way to death line on certain parts of the stage. So oh, interesting combination there. Oh, confirm on the dash attack. That was a true combo. 
Oh, excellent. Uh, running up and rolling back to bait the side B from Diddy Kong. Really taking advantage of Aerolink's um, nervousness. It looks like in this match, Aerolink is just not playing with enough Yomi layers to really have a chance against Neotono. Huh. Most of his approaches are very straightforward and lateral. He's not using too many baits or mix-ups, and Neotono is oh. able to just get in on side of him and Relax. then carry those stocks out with you know simple execution, basic fundamentals, and a superior reading ability. He's dancing all over Aerolink right now. Oh, Griff has a mind to use double jab and zip right out of there. He's just much faster. He's much faster than him. Right. You have to be as fast as Neotono if you want to play against him. You have to be fast and precise, just like Neotono's playing right now. I wouldn't say I see fast and precise gameplay coming out from Aerolink. Definitely he's playing, you know, he's a strong player. You can clearly see he does have strong fundamentals, but uh, he's not as quick as Aerolink, uh, excuse me, as Neotono. Aerolink definitely lacking in the ability to execute quickly and react as fast or make reads adapt as quickly as Neotono's doing, and it's going to cost him a lot. He's not out of this game yet, though. Let's see if he can get a banana out. Aerolink just holding back, shielding? Yeah, he does have to go in eventually. He's trying to take his time, but he's trying to figure out how he can get a bait on a player as quick as Neotono. Because the problem with baiting is it works really, really well on slower opponents when you can lock them and pressure them into being in a singular situation uh, where you can maybe convince them, okay, I want to shield here or something like that. But Neotono's completely controlling the pace of the match. You know, he's controlling Diddy Kong with the needles and... Aerolink's not even sure what to do about that. He, he clearly isn't familiar with the type of movement that Neotono's using, the back and forth kind of short, choppy right. movement. He's not familiar with the uh, dash and aggression, and Neotono's basically got two styles on him that he's unable to mix up on. Oh. Gets caught there with the banana. I thought we were going to see a bouncing fish attempt out of there, but Neotono showing that he's ever so patient. Oh, oh my that was gosh. An excellent and bait, waiting for a reaction, either an air dodge or an aerial, and gets the tipper up smash. Beautiful, beautiful. A swift 2 0 coming out from. Neotono right there is sending Aerolink out of the tournament. He will advance to the next round. Excellent, excellent play. That's the type of Sheik that I'm looking for to show everybody that Sheik is definitely possibly the best character. Definitely possibly. What am I saying right now, Corey? You think he's, uh, he's Sheik is the best character? He, he definitely game? has a shot at being the best character in the game. We're definitely seeing how uh, she can be a strong contender to challenge Diddy Kong for that throne right now. I agree, I agree. And Neotono playing super crispy. He's going to be a big contender for victor of the tournament if he can keep that type of play up. We have a lot of strong combatants here, though, so he's definitely not the only one. Aerolink didn't have what it takes, and now he's out of tournament. But, you know, uh, big no, applause. that was did. winners. Oh, okay, that was winners. Yes. Uh, okay, my apologies. My, so he's not out of tournament yet. And, again, really, really good applause out to Aerolink to uh, to make it this far in the winner's bracket. Yeah, so. getting first seed in this pool. Yeah, he's he did work. But uh, he's going to have a, a big struggle against this caliber of players. You know, this isn't pools anymore, you, you know? Yeah, this you're, is the next level. <laughs> you're not in Kansas anymore, baby girl. All right, Mewtwo King versus the Cat. These guys have been going back and forth back in the later Brawl days. So uh, after the Cat picked up Ice Climbers, he's been able to pick up sets off of Mewtwo King. Yeah, very, very strong opponents coming up right now. Mewtwo King. Now, let me tell you something. I slept on Mewtwo King so hard. You caught me with drool dripping, dripping down my cheek right now. My pillow is soaked. I was like, yo, who's Mewtwo King right now? I didn't even have Mewtwo King in my top eight. Uh, some people were like, yo, Mewtwo King is going to get like first, second, third, th this, that, and the other. I was like, a lot of people say, okay, he's not going to win the tournament. But now that I've been seeing him play yesterday, he leveled up OD. He, like, he, he just skyrocketed. It's like he, he went on the grind. You know, he was in that loot cave. For all you Destiny players out Who there. Who does he use? Diddy Kong? Diddy Kong, yeah. And, whoa. This guy, I mean, if you look at the Premier's Diddies right now, like, one of the top Diddies that comes to mind is Zero for when you just clean, crisp, quick, and well-executed play. And Mewtwo King is looking something like that, like another Zero. So, Ooh. definitely scary to have two of those guys in this tournament, at least, you know. Yeah, um, Zero makes Diddy look at least twice as fast. Yeah. Such fluid movement. Moves like water. Much akin to his Meta Knight back in Brawl. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but so anyways, I'm really excited to see what Mewtwo King can do. Yeah. The last time I saw him was at the come up when he faced Will and suffered a Game 5 loss. But Mewtwo King, uh, as you said, is definitely leveled up. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Well, we're going to see right now. Looks like we're gonna immediately going to be on Smash Bros. Not sure if they're going to do a button check first. Probably not, though. I think these guys have been playing friendlies. And we're oh, yeah, they're it. jumping right into it. Yeah, Nakat, very smart, always gets that early opening with the chip damage there. He realizes if Diddy's going to go for the banana, I'm just going to take this free 5%. Uh, Mewtwo King, solid up air chain. Very good, though. Hitting Fox out of that side B, that illusion, right away. Ending up getting extra damage. I like the patience of Nakat there. 
he was pretty confident that Misha King was going to come down with an aerial and not so confident in his ability to punish that. So he simply sat there with a the shield. Very good patience. Now, what we just saw right here is one of the things that I think makes Diddy very strong. When you whiff that forward air, it puts your hurt box so low into the ground that a lot of potential punishes just whiff. And it actually makes Diddy a little bit safer because you can't punish him with what you want to punish him with every time. And the cooldown on the move isn't so heavy that you can always pick something that hits low and strong. So maybe some down smashes aren't going to be fast enough. If you immediately react with a lot of characters, you can get a shield drop down smash. Um, right. Especially if you're a little bit more savvy with your defense and you get power shields in there, then it opens up your options a lot more. But... Yeah, minimize hurt boxes are a huge thing in this game. Pikachu also. Yeah, exactly. Those characters, uh, or, or rather that uh, component of those characters, really Ooh. big thing. Oh my here. goodness, was that a trade? Oh my gosh, the auto-correction on the ledges in this game is it vastly buffed. That Nakat lived from there, I thought he was dead for yeah. sure. On the old Smash Bros, he was a goner. Mm -hmm. Beauty King was definitely going for that trade right there. However, it did not work to his favor. Beauty King sets up for an edge guard with the forward air. Excellent drop zone. Fades back with the forward air, covering so much space. That move staying out so long, so meaty. I like what Nakat was going for there with the jab pressure at the edge. You know, put a lot of damage onto the shield, potentially get a shield poke there. Even if the jab doesn't push him off the edge as it might have once before, a lot of players simply drop their shield or try and punish with a grab or something of the na that nature. But wow. Yuji King's not having any of that. You can see what I was talking about. He just fast, crisp, precise, gets huge punishes, converts into excellent damage. And Nika answering back there, a bunch of up tilt string into a neutral air for a 5 hit combo, but does fall into the fair of Yuji King, and Yuji King's got his edge guard on point. Oh my on goodness. Point with that is guard. on point. That was a one frame vulnerability for sure. Yes, in case you weren't aware what Falso was talking about, when you grab the edge, for the very first frame when you grab the edge, you are actually still vulnerable. Your invincibility does not kick in until frame two. So if you precisely time a move to hit the edge, any character can do it. You can block out your opponent from grabbing that edge. Huh. Oh which, my which I think is actually a good thing because it, it actually allows you to continue being offensive if you happen to time it really well. So, you know, big shout out to Music King coming up huge in this match. You know, bodying the cat pretty much. Yeah, that was a very solid win. He'll have to reconsider if Fox is the option for him or not going into game two. Yeah, Muti King was exploiting uh, the cat's recovery a whole ton. Well, half of his yeah. percentage was gained from trying to come back on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which, to be fair, should be the case in many, many matchups. I mean, when your opponent's off stage, you have that advantageous position. Uh, you're going to see a lot of damage coming out, but it looked a little too free, in my opinion. Yeah. The way that he was just able to get those fares and even that detail onto Nakat, I think it was huge, huge for Mewtwo King, and it's not something I'd be looking for to happen again. Let's see if Nakat, he does stay Fox, and he actually runs it back straight to Smashville. I like how Mewtwo King has the immediate adaptation. You can see from game one, uh, he said, okay, I plucked a banana, I took 5% for it. This game, he simply went straight in to punish those lasers, closed the field. Oh, excellent conditioning by Mewtwo King. Knew that Nakat was going to want to land safely there. And with air dodges uh, vastly nerfed in this game, upon landing, he was able to take full advantage of that. Shout out to that very, very well played power shield there by Nakat. Well, how did he have invincibility there? You know what? I think maybe he just didn't wear out like all of his invincibility before. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. But uh, it definitely did look like Mitchell King got invincibility oh where I wasn't looking to find it. That was a footstool. So uh, he actually did. Managed to negotiate his way out of that situation. Jumped off, uh, jump, did a midair jump, and then put Stood off of Diddy, so he avoided his nair. The cat Very using the pressure situation, just running through Muta King right now to reset back to neutral. Rewards quite handsomely as he gets an edge guard. Ooh. Ooh. That was a fast down throw, did not have time to react. Yeah, the DI pretty poor. Ooh ha. Nice. Oh, oh was he was going for the beautiful stuff there, and that was great. That was yeah. absolutely gorgeous. That was a potential jab lock, but Fox's jab does not lock. Oh, oh my goodness. Yutu King with the rawest down air of the day so far. Granted, it is an early day, but how do you like your eggs, boys and girls? Holy. That drop zone there. That was just complete. Like, Yutu King was like, all right, this is over now. Yeah. You messed up, and this is your punishment. Absolutely. No hesitation. Wow, that was really. Um, I thought Nakat was the favorite to win this. I thought he was going to take it honestly, but Mewtwo King. But that's what that's what I've been saying. You know, I also would have said there's no way Mewtwo King can beat Nakat. Nakat, incredibly, incredibly powerful player. Not entirely sure about that box game too, but no John's all the same. Nakat did show up. However, Mewtwo King, we have been sleeping on the kid. Get your Dayquil, ladies and gentlemen, because Mewtwo King is in the house. I see Zero and Nairo hovering. I do not think these two have to play each other. No, I but know that, uh, Nairo, Nairo has to play Mr. R. 
I, I think that is the case. I saw Nairo next to uh, uh, Nakat and uh, Zero next to Mewtwo King. So you definitely can tell the top players do have their allies in this tournament. And allies are such an important thing because just getting that knowledge, the game is still very fresh, very new. So not everybody has an opportunity to download everything yeah, or the everyone. Ma uh, oh, sorry to cut you off there, Pierce, my bad. Go the match it. is uh, Nairo versus Mr. R. That's oh what's coming up. Goodness, All right, so we're waiting up. for uh, Raman to come through. Mr. R. And he will be scoring off against Nairo any minute now. Mr. R, again, a premier chic. Glad that he made it this far because I would have had Mr. R in my top eight. Um, and then the day before Apex, apparently he's going around getting bodied by uh, quite a few people. And Mr. R is not exactly the type to sandbag either. You know, he, yeah, he has yeah. a lot of pride for his region, a lot of respect for the game and for his competition. We see him walking over right now. And uh, But no, I was very surprised to hear he wasn't doing too hot. Um, in the you know the, in the pre-tournament matches, so glad to see that he did make his way over to top 16 winner side exactly where I expected him. This is going to be a very difficult fight for both combatants. Nairo, a very very uncharacteristic type of player in this game, although still he re uh, retains you know his top player status. He's not using the top tiers as we saw him play in Brawl. He's definitely showing, hey, listen, I'm a smash genius. Okay, I did not actually rely on Meta Knight to win all those games. I simply played to win, but uh, in this game, I'm going to just play. Still to win, but I'm going to do it my own way. Yeah. And that's something I respect a lot because the game is still so, Very so young. new. Yes, so, so yes. new. And it's what I've been saying this whole time. You know, obviously we can all see Diddy Kong as a very powerful character, but Nairo is showing, hey, listen, you know, there's other things that you can do in this game. And a lot of players are showing that, but not enough. One of the reasons Diddy Kong is regarded as so powerful is simply because every top player is using him. Of course, if you have eight of the, of the top 16 players in the world are playing Diddy Kong, then that, Diddy, Kong's yeah, gonna, Diddy Kong's meta is going to advance. Like, it's going to advance much faster. You're going to see uh, more high-level stuff come out of Diddy Kong, so it's going to make him look like a better character, right? Like, if there's only one Bowser Jr. doing hype stuff with Bowser Jr., then it's going to be like, okay, well, Bowser Jr. is not that good because I haven't seen him have many great options. But if all the top players right now just drop their thing and pick up Bowser Jr., you're going to see amazing stuff coming out of that character because the top players are going to have their minds to innovate and push that character forward. And also, in results... People are just going to see a lot of Diddy's because everyone's playing Diddy. So yeah. I do think Diddy Kong is strong, right? But I don't necessarily think that it's like, oh, my God, like Diddy Kong is a problem. I don't think he's as strong as Pikachu in 64. I don't think he's as strong as Fox in Melee. And I don't think he's as strong as Meta Knight in Brawl. So, you know, definitely interested in seeing what Nairo has to bring to the table with his pit. Ooh, Pitt, um, Nairo's actually confided me that he believes his matchup's 60-40 uh, or 70-30, rather, on Pitt's favor. In Pitt's favor, right, against Sheik. So let's see if he's able to overcome Ramen, one of the best Pits, Mr. R, hailing from the Netherlands. Of course, Nairo from here in New Jersey. Right now, he's just oh, getting owned. And you know what's, what's really funny is that Mr. R opened up the match with repeated grab approaches, which is normally something Nairo's really good at. He's really, really good at that neutral grab game. You know, he's, it's what he's very famous for, is his grab game. So for Mr. R to simply land grab, bouncing fish three times in a row on him, now we can see, okay, Nairo's like, oh, you want to play my game? All right, yeah. we, can, we can grab. We can grab. <laughs> but it, I just thought it was very, very amusing to see Mr. R come out and uh, just go with the grab game toe-to-toe -to -toe against Nairo, who's pretty much trademarked that grab game. He's a, the herald of the grab game. Nairo in a really tough position here. Uh, Mr. R simply zoning him out with yeah. some choice aerials, putting him in a bad position on Smash Bell. I really like the needles there, putting him back up onto that platform, not giving him a chance to recover to the ledge wow. and as clean as the method as he wants. But Nairo answering back with a grab. Not sure he wanted that up smash. Maybe he thought Mr. R was going to land on the platform. Oh, no. Falls into that frame trap, that vanish bait. So good. In this case, Nairo should have just jumped away. Pit having multiple jumps can just defuse the pressure situation very solidly. Can just avoid Sheik's double jumps. Um, her threatening presence in the air. Ooh. Oh, armors through that. Fair. Excellent right. here. Mr. R is going to attack on some damage. A huge confidence booster for Mr. R. Now, I think Nairo made a mistake there. He looked like he was looking to utilize the platform for a landing position, but I really felt he would have been much stronger resetting to the edge. After I was looking at Raman's footwork, the way he was jumping around in that zone, you can clearly see he had the vertical coverage necessary to lock down Dark Pit from landing on the ground. Yeah, Mr. R just going into this really fearlessly. Nairo having a lot of trouble getting back into a neutral position. I mean... Mr. R has been in an advantageous position for the last 45 seconds of the game. Ever since he landed that oh. one hit clean, clean. My goodness, the lead trump on Nairo knew that Mr. R was going to recover. Grabs it preemptively. 
That was amazing. Very clean. Oh, play there. yeah, Nairo's like, listen, I'm not going to fall for that again. This isn't how it works. <laughs> yeah, quick adaptation from top players. You only get one shot. You bust out your trick. That's it. That's your nut right there. No more tricks after that. All right, Nairo finds his way onto the edge. Can he find his way back onto the stage? Not sure about that rolling. I was looking for maybe something a little bit more basic, like a step forward and just use your superior jab range or something like that. I really like Mr. RG's usage of bouncing fish as another jump, and I love how he fades back with it. Always throwing people off. Could this be it? Yeah, that's it. Ooh. Oh, no, no, great DI, great DI. Yeah, excellent DI by Nairo. He's going to live that. Oh my goodness. That neutral air seems to have actually been nerfed a little bit in the... Uh... Whoa, that side Ooh. B went really far. Is there something I don't know about side B? Put me onto that. Oh yes, if you just hold side B, then it'll go off stage. And it's still connected to the string, so the explosion, the ball, will just float in the air. And then you can let go whenever you want. Very interesting. I haven't seen side B utilized that much, uh, that way too much. I know that many Sheik players like to go for the more aggressive edge guards. I guess he just felt like it wasn't worth trying to out-negotiate hit in the air, yep, which, yep. which makes a lot of sense. And he'd rather just have the edge guard when he can, comes back on stage. Yeah. Now, the two of the kills that Mr. R got were from a read where Nairo would get up regularly, hold shield, and roll back. And Nairo, uh, Mr. Yeah. R just bared him both times for it. So excellent patience by Mr. R, really uh, bringing out Nairo's defensive habits and just taking absolute advantage of it. Now we see Pit on Delfino. Harkens back to the brawl days right here. <laughs> back in, uh, Sharking was a major threat and similar tactics. I don't necessarily think Nairo's going to try and pull that out right now, but right now Mr. R is getting in there. I like the retreating bouncing fish to just make sure he gets himself solidly back on stage, doesn't put himself in a position to lose all of that momentum. But Mr. R simply going in, landing a bunch of awesome combo strings onto his opponent, converting them, following the DI very accurately, which is so important because one of the difficult parts of playing Sheik, one of the reasons people say she's such a hard character, is because it's not just as simple as picking up the six and hitting fair, 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 fair. It's more you have to read the way your opponent DIs and convert your combos into the correct direction. So you really have to wait and see, okay, how is my opponent defensively responding and correctly adapting to that defense to keep a solid offensive strength. Another vanish kill, Nairo. Was definitely fearing the up air because of the transformation. That would have been an early death. Yeah, definitely. That's something I even overlooked. You know, the up air was very scary. And also just the fact that Mr. R had him conditioned so well because he was landing these uh, these good reads on it, on the... Uh, on his offense, he was landing fair after fair after fair and converting it into up airs and such. So the uh, vanish naturally was a little that bit off guard. going to bait the air dodge out. Right. Very, very well played by Mr. R. We can definitely see he's doing everything he needs to do in the matchup to close it out. Nairo's in a really glum spot right now, only on his last stock. Oh my goodness, he's just catching all these rolls in. And I like the way Mr. R is playing. He actually, despite the fact that he's landing all these aggressive plays, if you notice, he's actually playing somewhat of a very campy kind of defensive style. And what I right. mean by that is he's simply playing, he's not really doing anything ridiculous to try and open up Nairo. And look at the text of Jesus, this man's footwork is amazing. Oh, anti airism. Yeah, and this is the scariness of Nairo's tenacity. When he wants it, he wants it. Yeah, and that kind of pressure is like... Yeah, definitely never count out Nairo. He pulls out the craziest stuff. Nairo... <laughs> It reminds me back to a couple of weeks ago when Nairo was playing 6WX, you know, who's also still in this tournament bracket. When uh, against the Zero Suit Simmons versus Sonic, when he landed that, that death combo on Halberd, I'm sure you remember. Weak hit advantage right there. Not actually going to close him out, but Nairo's got to be so careful. And it's not like he can just not air dodge because the fair is a threat, you know? Oh, oh this is a good grab for Nairo. Wow, one of that re grab. Uh -oh. Is that it? No, 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 no. Stay transformed just in time to increase the ceiling height. That, no jumps right there. Get the ledge. Oh my goodness, all these spaced aerials. That's a good position there for Nairo. Yes, he saw that his opponent had no jump. He can just throw out the up smash. Even if you air dodge into ground, it won't be punishable due to the increased lag. Excellent read on the rollback. And yeah, Nairo taking that the pace. platform just a little too high. Here we oh, go. Oh, jeez. Nairo taking command of this match right now. Nice yeah. arrow play there. That's going to be huge. I definitely sense the fear coming from Star. Oh, I wanted to see a jab there. Nairo is so eager to get that grab. Jab it covered every option there. It had the range we needed, but Nairo does manage to retain the advantage. Uh, we're definitely looking for... Oh, is that it? Ooh. Oh, jeez. Oh, there we go. The roll. And now, yes, Nairo is in control. He's in the driver's seat as long as he keeps up this consistent play. He pretty much has the game in the bag. The advantageous position is his. He's making the reads. He gets oh the fourth throw, and that's goodness. it. Nairo makes the comeback. Oh, jeez. 
That was excellent on Naro's part. Yes. Yeah, known as a very clutch player, he always makes that two-stock comeback. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, his brain just taps into the Zen mode. Like. So many players I would count down and out, but you can never count Nairo out. Former Apex champion, also won uh, Brawl doubles, I believe, and possibly, no, 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 Brawl singles hasn't played out yet, but um, this guy, I mean, he's just so, so strong at once he's in that position and once he's in his zone, making those consecutive reads, getting that hit after hit, when you can completely turn the tables on a player like Mr. R when they're controlling the entire match with a very, very precise defensive style, very crisp and clean maximum punishments, excellent reads on him. We saw he had the uphill battle the whole time, but once he got in, he stayed there. He put the pedal to the metal and took it home. So big shout out to him, but he still has another match yet to play. Both competitors are now looking to find out what this game plan is going to be for game three. We are going to final destination. I believe we are staying characters. Oh, okay. All right, we got both of these guys just feeling each other out right now. Naro opens up with a dash attack. He's going to get that combo on. Ooh, Mr. R not having faith in his forward air. As soon as he forward aired, he um, that was buffered so the spot dodge. That was yeah. so clean. You saw that fair into the turnaround grab. So clean. And that's the type of tech skill I'm talking about. Because sometimes, even the little stuff, just like turning around, like you actually only have a few frames to execute turning around in that situation to land the grab. You know, if you do something the wrong way, you're going to end up dash grabbing. Uh, but he was able to get the turnaround into the standing grab. Very, very precise, clean gameplay. Oh, the jab comes out. Disrupting Nairo's. Oh my goodness, that dash attack so disjointed. Yeah, Nairo's uh, dash grabs and dash uh, attacks, creating that 50-50. Definitely, uh, Pit is definitely a Sword Falcon right now. All right, so whereas the opening of the set had me suggesting that Mr. R was in the driver's seat, Nairo showing he's got really strong reads, breaking out the technology that we haven't seen before, the side B usage to close out that stock. He's up in the lead right now. 103, so it's not a huge lead. You know, Mr. R definitely can close it out, but he's going to have to get a strong read to actually land the KO. Oh, he does get that vanish, vanish read. I was just really looking for Nairo to jump away, but I'm sure he was afraid of the up air. All right, Mr. R jumping safely away with his bouncing fish. Ooh. I like that option because it covered roll, it covered spot dodge, and it covered pretty much most aerial attacks. So it was really, really good at beating it out in the neutral. You don't want to utilize it too many times because, of course, a, a defensive option is going to cost you. But I like how both of these players are just having no fear on each other. They dash up to each other and they're like, okay, who's going to flinch? Who's going to get in the correct positioning to secure the grab? See, back and forth, it's just like, okay, shield the potential attack or get the grab. And it's like a very, very fast game of rock, paper, scissors over and over and over again. Am I blocking? Am I grabbing? Am I dash attacking? You can just see they're utilizing, utilizing the neutral fundamentals a lot. And the reason the, the game doesn't look slow and can't be this way, even though it is right now a very defensive game, just because the players aren't wasting time in the defense. Nice, Mr. R is managing to gain some momentum. Tags on those needles for some percent. Oh. I really like the hesitation right there oh into the dash grab attempt. Nairo a little savvy, and both players going for some tricky stuff. Can Nairo get back onto the ground? Nice grab there by Mr. R. Goes oh, for the up air. excellent And I think Mr. that was R. super smart because he knows that this time Nairo is going to be looking for that vanish. To vanish. Yeah. yeah, so he was just going to stay still, but then Ramen definitely caught that. He called that out. Excellent utilization of those mix-ups right there. Both players seeming to be in prime condition. This was a huge, huge win. Excuse me for just one second. All right, so uh, Pierce, I just had to step away for a moment, but I'm still here with False. How are you doing, False? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. All right, so we're going to take a little look at the bracket while we wait for the next couple of matches. We have lots of good matches coming. Uh, I'm not sure if we're switching to... Oh, actually, we have to switch to losers now. Uh, so here's the winners. These guys are going to be in top eight. So Zero and Mewtwo King are guaranteed top eight. They're in. Um, and Mr. R and Niatono, the Japanese player. Uh, while Europe and Japan, I'm, I'm not, not sure which country Mr. R is from. I know he's from Europe, though, because he's repping Lowland Lions. He's facing Neotono. So these matches are top eight. They'll be streamed later today on VG Bootcamp if you want to see them. Should be great. Man, Zero and Mewtwo King, these guys must fight each other, like, all the time, huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>
Spe All right. Speaking of uh, Top 8 being over to the DG Bootcamp, I want to give a big shout-out to Spooky. Spooky, you came through for us huge here at Apex oh, thank today. You, man. I mean, you always produce top, top quality stream. Uh, you make it so easy to sit down here and for us casters to do our job, and you provide excellent content for everybody at home. So, thank you. you know, big, big round of applause to you, Spooky. We really, really appreciate it, and we're always glad to have you. All right, but I think we I have to go play my doubles match. All right, go Sorry, get guys, Let me help them really quick. Hold on. Go for it. So we have Fall stepping out to play his doubles match. They may have just announced it. I'm not 100% sure uh, who's coming up next. Let me take a look over and see if I can see who's sitting down. I see Ninja Link. I believe I see Amsa, but he may simply be there for moral support. Nope, 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 nope. Looks like he's playing. No, no, no. Abadango and Ninja Link are playing right now. There we go. All right. All right. Sorry about that, Pierce. I was just helping them set up some of course, speakers. Of course, of course. No, That's I'm nice. I had I, meant to do that myself and bring some speakers for the setup, but instead I brought them headsets, which is also nice. The top quality coming out from <laughs> Team Spooky right now. No, they're, they're smart to bring their own speakers with them. More people should do that, <laughs> to be honest.